for Graham Spelling, you might see, you, you've heard people, you've heard people uh, uh, talk about the name Yahweh, Yehovah. You haven't heard of any of those things? Alright, well the true name of the heaven the true name of, of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Y A Y A H A W A H. And our Lord's name is Yahweh Shah. So when people talk about God, that word God simply means power. So so the the uh the Israeli, the Islam culture, their community call out to Allah, they're calling to a power. But that word God simply means power. In the ancient Paleo Hebrew tongue. I got the alphabet right there in the ancient Paleo Hebrew tongue. That word power is Alahaya. And that also refers to the angels. So when people talk about God, they're simply calling on power, but they'll pray in the name of, and they'll say, they'll say JC or whatever idol that they, they call on. So they're falling on a call on a false power. Our Lord tells us in Acts. Chapter 4 and verse 12. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So that's saying that there's only one name under heaven, in the heavens, by which we must be saved by. So they try to claim that the Lord goes by many different names, they're profaning his name. And our Lord calls that out all throughout the scripture. He calls out the different tactics that they try to use to, to try to stop us from remembering the name of the Lord. And they know Philippians chapter 2 and verse 9. The Lord, the Heavenly Father gave His only begotten Son, our Lord Yahweh Shai, a name that's above every angel. When you have a first son, when you have a son, when you have a son, you name him after you. You, you, you have people who name their sons uh, uh, juniors. Who name their son, who give their sons the same name, right? Where do you think they get that from? You think that man just came up with that? The Heavenly Father told us beforehand in the book of, in the book of, uh, I think it's Exodus. He told us beforehand that he would send the angel before us. And to be careful, for that angel carries his name. That angel has his name in it. That angel is talking about our Lord Yahweh Shai. But they've tried to keep us away from the name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. This is Exodus chapter 23 and verse 20. Behold, I will send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared for you. Beware of him and obey his voice. Who did, our, who did the Heavenly Father send on this earth to die for our sins? His only begotten Son. So when our Lord says obey his voice, that was also a precursor to let us know beforehand that the prophets would be receiving visions, that the prophets would be re receiving visions, and at that same time, he would also send them here in the flesh. So we know that it's talking about the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son, because he said, I will send, behold, I will send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared for you. Our Lord sent his only begotten son here on this earth and he said that he would be back in three days. So when our Lord returns, he's going to call up these people on this chart. John chapter 4 and verse 22. Salvation is for the Jews. What's the first two letters of that word? J-U, that's where that word Jew comes from, the tribe of Judah. These top three tribes right here are referred to as the kingdom of Judah. These tribes right here are referred to as the kingdom of Ephraim. This is the northern kingdom in scripture. This is the southern kingdom. So salvation is for, the Ju is for Jerusalem or Israel as a whole, the 12 tribes of Israel, right? Beware of him and obey his voice. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. So that let us know beforehand 
that our Lord Yahweh had been guiding us this whole time. And he was also spoken of multiple times in the in the uh in the Old Testament. So when people claim that the Old Testament is done away with, it's because they don't understand. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 9. Therefore, the Heavenly Father has also highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. What did I just read in Exodus chapter 23 and verse 20? Behold, for my name is in him, and he will not pardon your iniquities. So in today's day and time, Shalakia, beware of him and obey his voice. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. So in today's day and time, I'm going to get a couple more scriptures. I don't know how you got a couple minutes. Not very long. All right, this is Acts chapter 5 and verse 31. I'll start at verse 30. Acts chapter 5 and verse 30. The heavenly father, the power of our fathers, raised up Yahawashai, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree, which is talking about the crucifixion. Him, the heavenly father, has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior. When you save somebody, what do you do? You got to go to him and and pull them away from the danger that they may be that may be around them so but you but you have to physically go to them and save them out of their troubles our lord is coming back on so-called ufos if you look on the news they'll talk about all these ufo sightings and they'll say we don't know how to explain them because those are the angels that are talked about in the bible and those angels are also coming back to not only destroy america but to save the lord's people and call us into salvation. Him the Heavenly Father has exalted to His right hand to be Prince and Savior. So when our Lord calls us up to into the chariots, into the clouds, He's going to be our Lord. We're going to receive all of our instruction from Him. Although it's going to be imprinted in our mind, He's going to be our head. And that was also in Isaiah. chapter 9 and verse 6. This is the Old Testament once again. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. Will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty Power, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So when our Lord told us in Exodus chapter 23 and verse 20, beware of him, do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions, and my name is in him. He's sending his only begotten son back to this earth to call up his, his elect, to call up his children, the nation of Israel, one third, beginning with one third, because you got a lot of hard-headed Israelites out there who don't follow the law, statutes, and commandments. So when somebody doesn't obey the voice of the Lord, what happens to him? They receive punishment. That punishment is going to come at the end by way of ICBM missiles. Russia, all of these foreign countries, Russia, China, Iran, they're stocking up all of these missiles, but they're not doing nothing with them. Because our Lord is causing them to save those missiles for when he gets ready to judge this place. So two thirds, you're going to have one third of these people who repent and come back to the Lord. But you're also going to have two thirds of them who choose to continue to sin. Those two thirds are gonna be here in America. You're gonna see war happening. You're gonna see all these different things happening. And out of nowhere, you're gonna see so-called UFOs appear out of space, in outer space. All these nations, all these foreign nations are gonna turn and they're gonna try to fight the UFOs. They're gonna start letting out their missiles at America. And one third of the Lord's people are gonna get caught up into the chariots which are the UFOs, but the other two thirds are gonna be left here in America and they're gonna receive that fire. They're gonna receive those thermo thermonuclear missiles. They're gonna get burnt up here in America because they chose not to repent. That's why we're out today to let the people know to turn away from their sins and transgressions so they don't have to get burnt up by missiles. 
so that they can receive mercy from the Heavenly Father. Him the Most High has exalted to his right hand to be Prince and Savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. But you can't be forgiven for something if you don't ask for it. And if you don't stop doing what it is that's offended. So one of those things is eating pork. Our Lord tells us in Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 7 not to eat unclean foods. And the church pastors will take that scripture and say, well, the Lord told us that everything that he made is clean. Our Lord wasn't talking about food that you actually consume. This is Acts chapter 11 and verse 7. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Shalaki, I'll start up further at Acts chapter 11 and verse 5. I was in the city of Joppa, praying at the entrance, Shalaki, praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, an object descending like a great sheep let down from heaven by four corners and it came to me when I observed it intently and considered I saw four footed beasts four footed animals of the earth wild beasts creeping things and birds of the air and I heard a voice saying to me rise Peter kill and eat but I said no not so Lord for nothing common or unclean has at any time entered my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven. What the heavenly father has cleansed, you must not call common. Our Lord wasn't talking about actual food. He was talking about Israelites. So you have Israelites that have taken on the customs of the other nations. You got Israelites that worship pagan holidays. Our Lord tells us not to celebrate Christmas, not to cele celebrate Thanksgiving, not to celebrate Valentine's Day, not to celebrate the, uh, 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 Black History Month. All of those, those days are, are, are made and set up to be a mockery towards you. Why are you celebrating a day where hundreds of millions of native Indians got slaughtered? Where are they at? Why are you celebrating a day where hundreds of millions of native Indians got slaughtered when they're our brothers? So all these different holidays are set up to, to be a mockery towards us. But you got certain Israelites out there who don't know this. Our Lord was telling Peter, anything that the Lord has cleansed, you shall not call unclean nor common. Because there's certain people out there, there's certain Israelites that don't know that they're Israelites. And they may be celebrating these different holidays. But when you speak to them, our Lord might open up their ears so they can receive the information. And from that point forward, they may turn away from all those different holidays. Because the Lord could be working with them. Our Lord wasn't talk about, talking about actual food that you eat. This is Mark. I gotta have one. All right, no. One more. Okay. I can do one more. Mark chapter 7 and verse 18. It reads, so he said it, Shalakia. So he said to them, are you thus without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatever enters a man from the from outside cannot defile him? He's not talking about food. He's talking about spiritual, spiritual food. So this is referred to as the book of the lamb. It's referred to as our daily bread and our milk, our, the, the, the living waters, which used to be able to sustain us. It's also referred to as meat. I'm good, thank you. Give it to the homeless. It's also referred to as meat. So our Lord tells us that a man's, uh, uh, a man, uh, our Lord tells us to roast our game. So this is referred to as meat. So eventually you'll, you'll start with the milk, which is used to sustain your bones, your foundation. And eventually you'll start eating, you'll start roasting game. You'll start consuming meat. You'll start consuming flesh. And that's used to build protein on your body. So now you're spiritually strong. You're not out here walking and, and, and whatever somebody tries to give you, as far as philosophy goes, you just soak it in because you have no foundation. Our Lord gives us the, the, the word to be able to spiritually sustain us. So he was saying it's not what goes into a man that defiles him because you could tell me anything. I'm not gonna believe it. It's what comes out of a man that defiles him. 
but it does not enter his heart, but his stomach. So the spiritual stomach is, is, is a sense of being able to discern between right and wrong. So if you tell me something, I'm not going to take it to heart. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to see if there's actually some truth to it. I'm going to digest it. I might sit on it for a while, but I'm not going to tell somebody else what you told me. You know, I'm going to digest it. And there may be certain points that have some truth to it, but I'm not going to go repeating whatever it is that somebody told me because that could defile me and I could go around spreading lies. Because it does not enter his heart, but his stomach. It is eliminated, thus purifying all foods. That's talking about spiritual foods. So I'm not gonna hold you too long, but when our Lord talks about uh, the dietary laws, that's talking about the food that we eat. When he talks about uh, spiritual food, it's not what goes into a man that makes him unclean, but what comes out, that's talking about the words. So you got, you got, you got, uh, throughout life, you might've heard different sayings, people telling you different things, different smooth sayings, different, uh, just different things as far as like, uh, you can look, but don't touch. Have you heard that before? And that's something, that's something that, you know, I, I, I've heard when men get themselves a fine woman and they might marry her and, and they might receive compliments like man your woman is fine and he might say hey you can look but don't touch well ultimately when when you got men drooling over your woman they're lusting about having sex with your woman and our lord tells us about that matthew chapter 5 and verse 27 you have heard that it is it was said to those of old you shall not commit adultery this is talking about actual carnal or, or, or flesh adultery, not spiritual adultery, because there's two types of adultery. You can commit adultery as far as sleeping with somebody's woman, but you can also commit adultery as far as worshiping false idols. So, so once you come into the truth, knowing the name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, you shouldn't be worshiping any other idols, because our Lord tells us that there's no other power. Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 7. I'll start at verse 5. I am the Lord and there is no other. There was no power besides me. I will gird you though you have not known me. They've tried to keep the name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son away from us. Because they know that once we, we, once we begin to call on the true name of the Heavenly Father and His only, through His only begotten Son, that's going to draw us closer spiritually to our Creator. That they may know from the rising of the sun to its setting that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. So our Lord tells us that there's no other power. So when you call on all these false images, when people call on Buddha, when people call on JC, when people call on, when, when people misinterpret the name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, and call on false idols, that's them committing spiritual adultery. That's them calling on things that are not their Lord's. Okay, so our Lord told us in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 27, this is talking about actual fleshly adultery. You shall not commit adultery, but I say to you, that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And one of the one of, one of the consequences that our Lord taught us for committing adultery is death. So you looking at somebody else's woman is ultimately putting you in a very risky place. You worshiping idols, false images, engraved images. Our Lord, our Lord is coming back to destroy all of the engraved images. So people are going to be calling, when our Lord gets ready to judge this place, people are going to be calling on all these different names. JC, Yehuda, Jehovah, but he's not going to answer them. Because while the word is going out, while the word was going out, they refused to, they refused to hearken to it. So when our Lord tells us that he that he came to uh I'll get it one more time. 
in Acts chapter 5 and verse 30. Acts chapter 5 and verse 31. Him the Heavenly Father has exalted to his right hand to be Prince and Savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of, of sins. That comes with you having to recognize the fact that you've sinned. Hosea chapter 5 and verse 15. I will return again to my place till they acknowledge my, till they acknowledge their offense. Then they will seek my face. In their affliction, they will earnestly seek me. So what did I say? Once you start calling on the true name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, He's going to hear you. Once you start correcting your ways, once you stop eating pork and shellfish, lobster, crab, shrimp, once you stop eating dirty animals and dirty foods and clean up your, your dietary law, once you start disciplining yourself, our Lord is going to draw closer to you. And that's what's been happening in these latter days. The true teachings of the Bible has been going out. And they've been trying, the so-called white man that's on this poster, they've been trying to keep us away from our power by mentally enslaving us. And one of those things is our Lord told us not to prick our skin, not to cut our skin. So they're trying to defile our temple with those, with those Maxines, with this so-called pandemic, the Crown Royale. And our Lord told us that would happen as well. But they're trying to defile our temple and trying to destroy as many people as possible because they know that when our Lord returns, and this is the last scripture I'll pull up for you. Re Revelations chapter 13 and verse 10. I'll start at verse nine. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. What did they do to us? What did they do to us? Yeah, they led us into captivity. They killed us with the sword for over 400 years. So what do you think is gonna to happen to the so-called white man? Huh? How so? They're gonna be enslaved. They're gonna be enslaved, but it's gonna be for, as, for, for twice as long. As our Lord tells us in, in the book of Revelations and in the book of Isaiah, I think it is. Uh, so like in Jeremiah chapter 16 repay unto her double what she has done to you so they're going to receive uh, uh, close to a thousand years of slavery the so called white men as well as the other nations so the Asians, the Arabs, the Russians the Hamites, the Africans because we're not African we're not African we're from Israel we're not from, we're not from Ham but all these other nations when our Lord returns and calls up his children, we're going to be rulers over the earth. We're going to be kings and priests. And those other nations that are on this poster, they're going to be our servants. And after a thousand years of hard slavery for the so-called white men, they're going to be destroyed, completely wiped out. They're going to be completely wiped out because our Lord said it would happen. But those other nations, the Arabs, the Chinese, the, Indi the, the East Indians, the Hamites, they're going to continue to be our servants. But eventually, they're going to be able to work and and and, and uh, have their own have their own uh, uh, dwelling place. But we're going to be ruling over them in righteousness, and they're going to have to come to us for all of their supplies, all of their supplies to build, all of their iron, all of their wood. They're going to come to us for, for for everything. That's the same way that we go to them for our loans. The same way that we go to their stores to buy food. The same way that we go to them when we need a car. The same, that, the same way that we go to them when we need supplies. The tables are going to be turned. So now they're going to be coming to us for everything that they need on a daily basis. So I don't know how much time you got, but I'm going to continue to read. Uh, huh? All right, well, if, if you want to take a picture, you can take a picture. But our Lord is calling for his people to repent. Okay. This is Revelation chapter 18 and verse 5. For her sins have reached to heaven 
and the Heavenly Father has remembered her iniquities. Render to her just as she is rendered to you, and repay her double according to her works. In the cup which she is mixed, mix double for her. So what they did to us during the time of slavery, we're gonna repay it onto them double, but we're not gonna be, we're not gonna be uh, doing all the wickedness that they did to us. We're gonna be, we're gonna be serving their, we're gonna be uh, 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 enslaving them in a righteous manner. But the so-called white man doesn't want this to happen, which is why he's trying to destroy as many people as possible with these different poisons, which ultimately is gonna lead towards the, end, the, the, the mark, which is in Revelation chapter 13 and verse 15. He causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free nor bond to receive a mark in his right hand on it or his forehead. That's talking about the RFID microchip. All right, I'll see ya. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse 18. I'll start at verse 17. For my eyes are on all their ways, they are not hidden from my face, nor is their iniquity hidden from my, from my eyes. And first I will repay double for their iniquity and their sin, because they defiled my land, they have filled my inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable idols. Who is the Lord's inheritance? This is Deuteronomy. Chapter 32 and verse 8. When the Most High divided their inheritance to the nations, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the boundaries of the peoples according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the place of his inheritance. So they're trying to attack the Lord's people and fill them with the uh, uh, abominable, abominable idolatries and detestable uh, uh, with all these different potions. But we're sent out to let you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Seminole Native Indians to let you know, to let you know not to take that, not to take that one-two uppercut because it's gonna knock you out.